Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on constraint-based sketching. There is now a sketch tab that has the same creation and modification tools for sketching originally in the design tab, uh, but now there are new constraint tools which we're going to explore in this tutorial. What we're going to use for a model and to help you transition into this new form of sketching is the familiar sketching tutorial using their traditional methods. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll start off by sketching a rectangle and we're going to go ahead and snap it right to the world origin here. Uh, you'll notice that you can enter dimensions just like you could previously using the tab key to switch back and forth and when you hit enter that is now completed. Now the sketch may look a little different than your typical sketching, which would just have black lines. Now we have some different colors. Uh, you'll notice a dark blue and a light blue. The dark blue indicates that it is fully defined or fully constrained, and the light blue is underdefined or under constrained. Uh, we'll also talk about over constrained in a moment. Now, uh, some of the same techniques like selecting and dragging or using the move tool with the built-in uh, ruler capabilities in order to make precise edits uh, or to take something uh, and move it an exact amount uh, still have that capability. But with the concept of constraint-based sketching, we want to fully define it using both constraints and dimensions. So we could uh, very precisely edit this sketch by turning on our dimension tool. And if I go ahead and I dimension this line here, you'll notice the color of this line changes from the lighter teal to the darker blue, indicating it's fully constrained. You might think that by dimensioning this length, this line would be fully constrained, but this line still, we don't know its location in this direction. We don't know this length quite yet, but now that the length of this line has been defined, the location of this line is constrained as well. Uh, you'll notice the dot, the point at the end is still a teal, and so that aspect of this line is under constrained while you'll notice that point there is blue. Uh, if we just go ahead and add another dimension for the length, now we are fully constrained. Now let's go ahead and uh, give ourselves a plan view just so we're looking at it heads on like we typically do with sketching. And we'll go ahead and exit out of our dimension tool. So uh, previously with space claim uh, sketching and editing, when we added dimensions to the model, uh, we would have to use a tool like pull or move in order to uh, drive the action that we want to perform. Uh, but now with constraint-based sketching, if I select that number and type in a new value, you'll notice the model actually updates without me telling it what to actually move. All I had to do was edit a dimension. Now, in theory, this line could have moved up or down or this line up or down or maybe symmetrically, uh, but not with the new constraint. So you'll notice here that there is a icon, a little I that says show constraints. And if I turn that on, I can now see the different constraints on the model. This looks like a dimension and in the bottom it says length there. Uh, and if I go ahead and I click on this drop down, there's a bunch of different constraints that are locking these lines either together or to the uh, horizontal or to the uh, origins that are there. So this is locked to our world origin, requiring these lines to stay where they are and these lines to move. Now I could delete different uh, constraints in a couple different ways. Uh, if I select an object and I want to learn about the constraints on it, I can go to our little mini toolbar and here it's going to highlight what it is constraining it to and I can click on one of these to delete it. Uh, there's also a delete constraint icon that I can turn on and I can pick these blue ones here in order to delete those constraints as well. Let's now continue with our sketching. We'll go ahead and change this back to that original value of 60. Uh, and next up, we'll go ahead and add a circle. Now, in this case, we'll just snap it to the origin here. And you'll notice that by default, uh, my cursor is snapping to the grid. So I could easily click on a value like 20 or type in a number as I go. Uh, you'll notice, by the way, that there is an option to automatically create the constraints, and that is on by default. So uh, if you like the ones that it's adding, 
great. Uh, if you find that you're just deleting them in order to have more freedom with the sketch, you can turn that off right here. And uh, I'm sure you'll find that uh, these constraints uh, sync up with traditional sketching constraints, uh, and they're easy to add by turning them on and selecting the objects that you want to constrain. So we've added one circle here, and we can either dimension as we go, we could add a dimension to the circle, or we can wait and dimension it at the end when all the sketches are there and we want to fully define the sketch. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll throw some different uh, sketch items on. We'll go ahead and sketch the second circle. And just like uh, previous sketching, you notice that the first circle will highlight when they are uh, of equal size. Now, in the past, that would not actually lock them together. But if I escape out of this circle, there is an equal radius constraint uh, that's been added between these two circles. And that, again, is created with this automatic create constraints option on right there. Uh, we'll go ahead and add either some rectangles. Uh, you'll notice if we do a rectangle, uh, it'll each side will be independent. But if I am looking for a square and I want it to automatically have equal sides, that is an option that will be automatically added as well. Uh, and we'll see here when I dimension it that it will constrain both sides as well. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll just throw another square on this side. Notice it's really easy to add one of the same size as it's snapping uh, to that height over there. Now, here we've modeled up a few things and it's a little symmetric and a lot of times we have very symmetric parts. So we could go ahead and create our construction line. Uh, again, snapping it to the midpoint at the top, the midpoint at the bottom. There's a little perpendicular symbol there. And what we can do with this construction line is right click on it and set it as a mirror. Uh, so now if we create things, they are going to mirror to the other side and we uh, can edit and the mirror will be maintained uh, and we can also delete and the mirror will be maintained. Now, in this scenario, uh, we may want to add a few things. We'll go ahead and say add a line. And uh, in previous sketching, it may have been pretty important to pick a specific location to start a sketch. Uh, but because it's so easy to add dimensions and then update them, uh, we can often just throw it on in an approximate area and easily uh, iron out the dimensions later on. Um, so I could just click as I go. I could type in values if I you know, have an approximate number to go with uh, and create this line up at that angle of 60 and then connect over horizontal to the center there. Um, there are still a lot of great keyboard shortcuts and techniques that are still available. For example, if I want to add a circle at a certain location and I did know uh, where I wanted it to be, I could go ahead and tap shift when I'm hovering over a point and I will get some dimensions that I could either use as just a visual reference or I could go ahead and, uh, you know, type in uh, some hard values and get some um, exact numbers there. And we'll go ahead and create that to say uh, 10 millimeters. Millimeters. So we have the same tools to add geometry and also to modify. For example, uh, if we wanted to create an offset of this circle, we do have uh, the offset curves tool that will uh, continue to work in this methodology. So uh, if I wanted to give it a three millimeter offset, I could easily do that as well. Uh, I may also want to clean up the sketch. Uh, maybe I uh, need to trim and remove where some intersections are. So uh, notice here, if I turn on this trim away tool, we've got this 40 dimension, you know, measuring what is what was an entire line. And if I click on this piece to remove, that reference moves down with that line. And so if I trim that, now I've got a dimension like that. Uh, you'll notice, though, if I click on this one, I've simultaneously removed the reference on both sides, and that dimension disappears, which um, is not a big deal. We can uh, address that uh, in a moment as well. We'll trim one more piece there, so that's cleaned up as well, and we'll go ahead and uh, escape out.
Now that our entire sketch is created, let's go ahead and fully constrain it by adding some additional dimensions. Uh, there are different uh, methodologies and trains of thought when it comes to dimensioning. Uh, we could dimension the outer geometry and then dimension the inner pieces, uh, depending on if the overall size is important or if certain locations of things are more important, we can start with those as a reference. Uh, in this case, we could dimension, let's say, the width. Uh, from either this line to this line here, we could pick the length of this line as a measurement. We could even pick uh, the centers of these circles or the endpoints of these lines, depending on if we wanted to put angles or draft or make some more drastic changes, these dimensions are going to behave differently. Uh, so let's say I select this line at the bottom and I add a dimension here. So you'll notice a little message popped up. And sometimes what I could do to test out uh, a change is to go ahead and try to edit it. Uh, one thing that uh, happens right now when we create a mirror line uh, is it actually adds a fixed constraint here. Uh, so what I could do is I could select uh, that line, go to this delete option, uh, and just delete this fixed right here. And you'll notice that it now updates to the 80 uh, and extends over. Uh, it looks like that our line, um, due to the trimming, may have not extended over here. Uh, so what we could do is set up a constraint. Constraints are easily added by turning it on, uh, picking uh, one object and then another, and you'll see uh, it extends over nicely like that. Uh, so we may have um, some additional dimensions to add. So, you know, we have the overall length here. Uh, we really don't have the overall height anymore, so we may want to add that back in, and that could now be a matter of picking two lines. We don't have a single line that goes up anymore, uh, but now we have uh, between those two lines there. Now, you'll notice that on the left side here, this is fully constrained, as is the parallel one to it. We knew we know that this was constrained here, uh, and then here we have a distance. When uh, we do not get the constraint we want, what we could do is escape out to select and start dragging around to see what kind of behavior that we have. Uh, this will maintain the constraints that exist, uh, and it looks like we just need to reconnect over here. So uh, sometimes it may not automatically create the constraint, but you can easily add it, uh, and uh, these will be the types of developments that will be uh, added and enhanced to the product with each release. Now we know that this one is fixed, so we could uh, add a fixed constraint to this line at the top. Now you'll notice that the colors change. This darker one indicates fixed, and these darker ones, uh, darker blue, indicate uh, fully constrained. Uh, what is not constrained are our inner circles and these features in here. Uh, so those should be easy to do. Uh, if we want to maintain the offset value we used, we just want to click between these two, and there's that three millimeters. These circles are defined by their size and also their location. Uh, depending on where we dimension their location, uh, we'll determine how different updates might occur, and we'll go ahead and explore that. So you'll notice that uh, when I fully constrained or defined this circle, this changed color, this circle changed colors as well. Uh, if I escape out here, you'll notice that here we have a symmetry constraint as it's reading in the panel at the bottom. So by having a mirror line, it will automatically add a mirror constraint. So we could go ahead and uh, continue dimensioning. Uh, Perhaps uh, we care about this angle, uh, or maybe uh, there's a different dimension. You know, maybe we care about the height here, and then uh, the distance across the bottom, uh, and then uh, perhaps either the length of this line or an angle, and we'll see that is now fully defined. Uh, over here, in the for the square that we created, if I dimension one side, we'll see the other side automatically updates. And when we sketch this rectangle, uh, it happened to snap to equal uh, length. And so you'll notice that that is fully constrained as well. So now we have uh, this fully constrained model. 
And in that uh, previous sketching tutorial, uh, we learned that when we're using the move tool and we want to uh, create references or uh, constraints and relationships, it's based on selection. Like we could drag um, a box around a group of objects and then use the move tool to move them up and down. Uh, with constraint, based sketching, uh, it's more based on the reference of dimensions. So uh, let's explore uh, some changes here. What I would like to happen, or what you'll notice happened, is when I changed the 640 to a 60, those circles got larger. And I want them to stay the same size. So what we could do is add a dimension to the size of those circles. By doing this, you'll notice that our sketch is over constrained because the 20 and the 30 and the 40 conflict with each other. So if I wanted to delete a dimension, I could go ahead and select a line, and it's now deleted. By having this 20 here, we know that the size of that circle won't change. And if I go ahead and I update this 40 to 60 now, it moves down correctly. What happened before was this line was locked to a length of 30, and I was not paying attention to that. And so the only way to update this to 60 and keeping this 30 was to make these circles much larger. By adding a dimension to the thing I cared about, it helped me understand that there was a conflicting dimension, which upon deletion now makes the update that I want. Now, in this scenario, these circles did not move down with it. And I actually wanted to keep the relationship to the bottom. So if I undo, I could go ahead and either uh, start by adding a dimension or deleting a dimension. Here, if I dimension it to the bottom, it's overdefined. And I know that this is the dimension defining it vertically. And if I delete it, we are no, now, we are no longer overdefined. And if I go ahead and update this value, now those circles automatically move with those uh, with the rest of the lines at the bottom with that change to the overall height. So this is the overall principle of creating a constraint based sketch uh, using the dimensions and the constraints along with the guidance of the colors uh, and these callouts right here. Thank you for watching this tutorial and have a great day.